Today we gather as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession to declare the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Jesus Christ, merciful Savior, as we contemplate your gracious and loving sacrifice this Lenten season, have mercy on us according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out our transgressions, wash away all our iniquity, and cleanse us from our sin. And praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. The peace of the Lord be with you. The first reading is from Isaiah, the 12th chapter, page 691 in the Pew Bible. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away and you comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, page 1160 in the Pew Bible. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become righteousness of God. The word of God for the people of God. Today's gospel is from Luke, the 15th chapter. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe, fam <clears throat> a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he had come, came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one 
of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the gospel of the Lord. I was thinking, what a coincidence that the uh, service ended in Estonia 10 hours ago, and 10 hours from now, we'll be done. (laughs) So let's get started. (laughs) Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of this day where we celebrate and worship and praise you, your holy name. God, we thank you for the words which are before us, and we pray these words would be the bread of life as we receive them. And so, God, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's a story, an article in the magazine Wired. Now, you may not know this magazine. It's, it's not for those who have had too many espressos. It's actually a magazine that talks about video games. And the story goes, begins this way. In video games, death is rarely fatal. If you take a shotgun blast to the noggin, a simple restart gets you back in the game. It's true, isn't it? Well, you at least can take my word for it. That's what makes the twist, they say, behind this new game coming up called uh, Upsilon uh, Circuit, so scary. They write, if you die in this world, you're done. Nope, you can't even start over. You can never play the game again. Now, I'm not sure who the marketing expert is on this one, but we'll have to see how that goes, right? (laughs) The video game makers call this condition of death permadeath, like it's permanent. Wired continues by saying, only eight people play at a time, but a vast audience of spectators can stream the game live. In the event of a permadeath, a random viewer becomes the next player, kind of like uh, you're the next contestant on the Price is Right. But if we think about it, death that is, we know that death in this life is pretty permanent. We could call our death permadeath. Well, I guess except for the resurrection, of course. But there is a sense in which we die in this life before our actual death as believers, as Christians, as those who are in Christ. That gives us a restart and we can get back into the action. In fact, that's what Jesus' parable is about. This parable of the prodigal. Did you hear the words with which I concluded this text? The father says to the older son who's complaining about this celebration of the younger son coming home. 
he says to him, but we had to celebrate and we had to rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. No, not a physical death, but a death of the spirit, a death of the soul, a death of relationship. And so this brother of yours was cast out of relationship, but now has returned. And in fact, that's what Paul is saying about us as he writes the letter to the Corinthians as recorded in 2 Corinthians. We heard Norm read this for us from chapter 5. If you have your Bibles, pull those out or follow, follow along in the Pew Bible or you can use your bulletin. Get God's Word somehow in front of you. Paul is talking about a new life we receive in Christ Jesus. In verse 17, Paul says, If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. Now friends, we may gloss over this verse, but it is so rich, we must pause and hear from the words of Paul to uncover some biblical truths and good news about our condition in Christ Jesus. First, the qualification here is that one is in Christ, that Christ has become Savior and Lord of the individual. Paul says in Romans 8, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. And that's what it means to be in Christ. We have been set free. Our sin has been removed from us by the work of Christ on the cross and his resurrection. Furthermore, Paul says to the church at Galatia, in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. So it's not just a, a casual head nod to Jesus. No, not at all. This is a deep understanding and rich relationship with Christ. If we are in Christ Jesus, we are free from sin and death, and we are living as children of the Heavenly Father. And as such, three realities become true for us, those who are in Christ Jesus. The first is that we are new creations. Literally here in the Greek, new creatures, says Paul. That we become new again. In fact, it's almost as if we are born again. Do those words sound familiar? They ought to. Because as Nicodemus the Pharisee comes to Jesus at night, Nicodemus asks about what it takes to enter into the kingdom. And remember Jesus' answer? He says to Nicodemus, well, you must be born again. Of what? Of water and the Spirit. Nicodemus is shocked and says, well, certainly I'm not supposed to climb back into the womb of my mother and be born again. And Jesus says, oh, you're just being silly. That's a paraphrase. Of course not. But we are to be born spiritually anew that we are to become something different than we were before. Paul says to the church in Galatia, again, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, there's neither slave nor free, there's ne neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Neither circumcision, chapter 6 and verse 15, nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is, is the new creation. We have become something new. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. And so Paul continues, not only that, but the old has gone. You know, psychiatrists talk about the baggage we carry with us through life. But guess what? That spiritual baggage has already been removed. We celebrate today. 
That's the good news. That we don't have to carry our spiritual baggage. Now some of us do because we get used to it. And we're kind of comforted by it. It's like our little pet. Look at my spiritual baggage. But we can shed that. Christ has died on the cross that we can let that go. And by the way, are you paying attention to the tense of the verbs here? What's the tense here? It's past tense. The new creation has come. This is a done deal if you are in Christ Jesus. It's already happened. Similarly, the old has gone. It's been removed. It's been shed. No longer is there sin and hurt and the baggage of a life lived without Christ. No, in Christ Jesus, that stuff is removed from us. Paul says, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and you have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge and then in the image of its creator. We are no longer in the image of, of man, but are now being made into the image of God. In Romans, Paul says, For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. That baggage, that sin, we let go. It's gone. What good news. What a gift this is for us this day. That having been renewed in Christ, that we are made new creations. The old has gone. And so what do we look forward to? How do we now live? I'm glad you asked that question. The new, says Paul, is here. What tense is that? Present tense. Now. We're living now as new creations. We're living now as those who have shed the old self. We're living now in the newness of of Christ. You know, for many years, I think the church got the gospel wrong because we were, we were speaking the, the gospel of salvation. It was a minimalist gospel. The question the church asked of those in the church and outside was, are you saved? Well, guess what? That's not a question Jesus ever asked people. Are you saved? What that presupposed is that we live this life in its yuck and its mire and our sin, but there was hope at death because we had our ticket punched to heaven. And when we die, we show up, and there's Peter at the pearly gates welcoming us. Finally, he says, you made it. Yep, got my ticket. But you see, that is a minimalistic gospel. You know what gospel Jesus preached? Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. He invited people to enter king, the kingdom, not salvation. He said, come, enter the kingdom. It's at hand. It has come. It is here. It is now. And so this is what it means that we are living as new creations here and today. We were therefore buried, says Paul, with Christ through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life, a resurrected life, as it were. What was lost is now found. What was dead now has come alive. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in tr true righteousness and holiness. Today is the day we live in the kingdom. For we have already entered it. How? Through Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, newsflash, you're living in the kingdom already. Welcome. Glad you're here. This is our new life in Christ. And it's purposeful, by the way. 
Paul continues here in, in uh, 2 Corinthians by saying that uh, we are ambassadors of Christ Jesus. And he has committed, he, Jesus, has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, though God were making his appeal through us. Guess what? As new creations, as those who now live in the kingdom, our sole responsibility is to invite people to join us in kingdom living. God's appeal as his ambassadors, the message we preach is this, be reconciled to God. How? Through Christ, who had no sin, but was made by God to be sin for us, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. And Paul also promises at the end of Romans chapter 8 that nothing can snatch us out of the hands of a loving God. Friends, this is good news. We are new creations. The old has gone, the new has come through the person and work of Christ Jesus. And so let us share this message that others might enter into the fullness and the abundant life of the kingdom come. Amen. And let us now profess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father, we thank you for the glory that you have revealed to us through creation, but even more through your Son. Lord, we ask that you, you open our eyes, our ears, our hearts to behold your glory, to find in your word the beauty and majesty of who you are. And then help us to put to death our old selves and live in obedience as your children and ambassadors in this fallen world. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord, we pray for our nation, the people of this country and our leaders, that as a nation we may come back to you. We pray you work in the hearts and minds of our leaders to use wisdom and compassion as they make decisions, that they would hear the voices of those that they serve, and that they seek to do their best in the position that you have put them in. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, we pray for our community and our neighborhoods and your churches. May your spirit be at work in these areas to bring a sense of your presence and love. May we hear Rich and Lutheran Seek to make your presence known through our love and service and help keep our focus on you and your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Father, you raised up Christ as Lord of life and conqueror of death. And so we pray that you would deliver the sick from their illness, give relief to all who suffer, bring comfort to those grieving, especially those whom we name before you in our hearts. And wherever people cry to you, may they know your mercy and grace is sufficient for them in every need. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. So we entrust our prayers to you, Lord Christ, for the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And so together, out of obedience to your command, this then is how you should pray. With one heart and voice we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Amen.